Hello, welcome back to Tarot Time with Andy. This is my vibrational reading. Please do your own research for entertainment purposes and allegedly. Hello, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Today, I would like to do a spread on E. Barlow and Amber Heard. It was a request whether or not uh, Amber Heard has ever beaten up E. Barlow. Uh, they are lovers, so, and uh, an item now. So let's find out. First, I'm gonna ask the pendulum. Let's have a little conversation with the pendulum. Here we go. Okay, has Amber Heard ever beaten up, physically used violence against Eve Barlow? Has Amber ever used violence against Eve? Has violence ever been part of their relationship? Yes. Does Eve fight back? Does Eve fight back? Fight, fight, fight. Yes, she does. Has there ever been black eyes? Have they ever given each other a black eye? Any black eyes? Uh, maybe, I'd say probably some sim similar bruises in the area, probably bruises in the area. Yeah. Any hospital visits? Any hospital visits? No. No, so there you have it. Yes, she has. Let's get some cards on it. Hope you guys are doing well and thank you for the super thanks. So it happens when eight of pentacles in reverse is the main pull here. So let's find out that here we go. Eight of pentacles in reverse. So this is um, when they want, when they're neglecting, when they feel, when Amber feels neglected and she's not able to cut corners in what she wants. This is when it happens. When she asks for help and she's like, no, I'm not going to help you. Uh, so it happens swiftly, very ex, it ex, it's executed very swiftly. Yes. And it's kind of in a delusional position. And, uh, this is real, when she doesn't feel like she's too dedicated, when there's that lack of feeling like she's not doing enough for her, not enough dedication, uh, trying to overcome some kind of situation and, uh, she delivers it. She delivers it and she does it swiftly. And, um, you know, because she wants to cut corners on something and she's not getting help. And so it's basically feeling neglected, in essence, neglect. And when she feels like she can't have her cornucopia, I call this my cornucopia card. And when she doesn't feel like she's getting the fruits, the fruits of life and, um, you know, everything going well and feeling like she's got everything going for her, everything's on the table. You could see there the abundance of life and she's not feeling too abundant, I would say. So I'm going to change my lighting because that was bad okay so let's get the challenging position challenging position here we go i got a new color tablecloth i hope you like it did that for the queen elizabeth and her passing i noticed that her crown and her pillow on her on her coffin is purple okay here we go we got the wheel the wheel so that is a challenging position is having positive direction and feeling abundant with each other and that everything's going well and, and spinning in the, in the right direction in their favor and things are just rolling along nicely. When everything's rolling in ni along nicely, it's difficult. So that's a challenge for them. Having everything go positive is a challenge. Feeling like th they're turning a corner in a positive way with the relationship, that is a challenge. So it looking, it's looking like positive karma is a challenge for this relationship. So it's, it's not surprise. Uh, probably most of our relationships are like this, you know, uh, because that's in a challenging position. So I'd say they're pretty much, uh, nearly probably like this a lot of days where things are not going so well <clears throat> or easily can flip on a dime. Let's get to the focal point for Amber and Eve. Amber and Eve has a nice ring to it. Amber and Eve, the focal point, the focal point. Here we go. The hermit. So with the hermit, they're soul searching, trying to figure out you know, a better way for each other, probably so they can stay together. So they do soul searching. They probably have some deep, uh, deep communication. Um, they may with, they withdraw from other people. I don't think they withdraw from each other because I don't think Amber would tolerate it, but they withdraw from other people. Uh, and so in getting some enlightenment, being with each other, coming to some realizations. So they're trying to have a healthy relationship, doing a little soul searching. So that's good. seems like she might be better with women than she is with men. Who knows? Okay, so let's get to the uh, past position that no longer serves. Past position that no longer serves. 
That is four of wands in reverse. So that is the party card, you know, celebrations, uh, you know, weddings, all that. So trying to cut back on the partying, I would say, and probably being around other people as well. Uh, it's also, you know, this here also is a lack of stability. So they will have problems from the past. She's had a lack of stability. So this is the past position. So the four, this is a home card for a wall structure being solid, being uh, things are going, you know, in, in a really good way, uh, a good home environment, work environment. Uh, not having a good work and home environment is something that um, doesn't serve her anymore. She doesn't want this anymore in her life. She wants better for herself. It's what it's looking like, so that's good. Uh, and feeling this freedom here, uh, you know, is this. Feeling free and, and keeps her kind of, in some respects, makes her feel stable. But here, this whole disruptions uh, and leaving home, being nasty and fighting and not being positive, arguing and leaving the home, all that business, she wants to leave it behind her. She wants to leave the lack of stability behind her. So she wants, I would say, being an, a narcissist histrionic, she wants the island of stability. She wants the island of stability because she never, she probably felt like she hasn't had it in a long time, it's stability. So she doesn't want the instability. So it doesn't serve her anymore, doesn't want that instability, which also includes, you know, here, this is a, a celebration party. So she's cutting back on the partying really. Uh, so that doesn't serve her anymore. She's got to cut back on her drugs and drinking. Let's go to the hidden energy, the hidden energy. Hidden energy, that is the root here. They are struggling. They are trying to make it work. Juggling. It's a juggling act. And they are dating. It's the dating card. So they are dating. They're not married. They're dating. And they're trying to, to juggle the resources between work and play, whatever it is they do for work, but that's also, it's a, it's a juggling act. So they're doing the juggling act in the dating process with, with each other and trying to balance the scales here. You know, it's a equilibrium thing, trying to be equilibrium, it's a two. So they're, they're, they're in that first step of dating. They're in that first step of juggling resources, probably sharing bills, <clears throat> you know, between, uh, and also sharing their time between work and play. Uh, let's go into the future, the future for Amber and Eve, Amber and Eve, here we go. We have here the sun in reverse. They're not super happy. There's a lot of clouds that are blocking the joy. The sun card still is pretty positive, be it up or down, uh, but they are having some, it's, it, this position is just a little more difficulty finding the joy. So more negative days than positive days, I would say. They do have some good days, but they have a lot of, um, they have some hard, they have hard times sometimes finding the positive aspects of life and seeding new things. And they don't want to highlight the problems that she's had and they cannot purify themselves. Uh, the sun is all about purification and having your chakras lined up and uh, seeding new enthusiasm and healing and hope and joy. So it doesn't look like she's ever going to tr truly be able to heal even within this relationship. So the hope's kind of in reverse, not a lot of hope. Uh, they're definitely, she cannot purify or get rid of the negative karma that she's built up for herself, that negative PR, publicity. Uh, she's kind of stuck with it. And so she might feel like this is her only chance to be in a positive relationship. So she's trying to alter herself in a better way here with this card, this card, and this card, and this card too. So she's trying her best to to keep this one okay that's what it's looking like so far even though the pendulum says they've had some fights and altercations maybe she's going to hold back on that too we'll find out so let's get to the feelings in the situation feelings in the situation with amber and eve amber and eve there we go ah so the feelings in the situation is she's she's expecting gloom and doom that's part of the borderline, unfortunately, they expect failure. And a lot of times uh, they bring it on themselves because they expect it. And they take down relationships because you're gonna hurt me, I'm gonna take it down. It's that fear of engulfment, uh, fear of failure. If they think someone's gonna hurt them, then I'll hurt you instead. I'll take you down before you take me down. So that's what this is. So it's looking like uh, she fears an absolute failure, uh, inner conflicts with others to the point where no repair, fear of fear of changes so she is fearing this change 
She's not, she knows that she can't really clear her old path. Um, she knows she's not going to completely have a radical change. Um, so she's trying to work with her disorder, I would say. And she knows that she has this tendency to take the whole house down. It's like burn the house down when you break up. She's trying to avoid the burning the house down, okay? And she's got some clear insight on that with that lightning bolt there. So, yeah, she, she has some insight because they talked about her disorder. So she's a little more in tune with her disorder. She might be in treatment because of it. So she's trying to do better for her disorder and manage it. It is treatable. It is treatable. Curable, no, but treatable, yes. So I think she's trying to um, control it better and use use the tips and tri tricks to manage, uh, to self-soothe herself uh, so that she doesn't burn and scorch down the house when she's mad because <laughs> she's got the really bad BPD. She's got the worst variant, in my opinion. There are four subtypes. I think she is the violent kind, obviously, right? Uh, she's definitely not the quiet borderline. She is the on the far end of the spectrum, okay? Uh, she's on the, some call it the witch one. So yeah, the very worst where she lashes out. She's the outward anger variant. Uh, all the other three tend to anger, tend to go in, more inward. So she's the really volatile kind. Let's go to the um, next position, the outside influences affecting them. Outside influences affecting them. What's affecting the pair? These two women, what's affecting the pair? What's affecting the pair? There we go. Open up your heart chakra. So, yep, she has a problem with empathy. Uh, fortunately, a lot of cluster Bs do. And they tend to flip and flop with borderline. They kind of have a braking system. They turn it on, turn it off, depending on how they feel. And so she's got, she's, she needs to open up her heart to her partner. Uh, so that she can feel the love and give the love. Um, if you have a broken heart or if you block off your heart, you really can't receive the love. So in this position uh, with the Two of Swords, this is someone who needs to open themselves up. Um, because with a blocked heart, you're going to have consequences. You're going to have a lot of indecision. Uh, you're going to have a lot of conflicting thoughts that will get her to take down the whole house and burn it down. So it's, it's really a thought disorder where if they think they're going to get burned, they burn you first. So this here, she needs to use her head and her heart to weigh options and, and deal with the obstacles and weigh both sides and try to trust herself, trust the partner. Uh, but she has this conflicting thoughts in this position. She needs to open up her heart. It's still blocked. She has problems keeping it blocked. She probably being borderline flips and flops, in my opinion. That's how I feel about this card. She goes, one day she might have it open and not available. Then she closes it off. You made me mad. I feel triggered. Now it's, you know, so it's this and this and this and this with them. It's very push and pull relationship. That's how I feel. Normally I wouldn't do that with the card, but considering what I know, what her diagnosis is, I have no doubt that's what's happening. Uh, so let's go to the hopes and fears. Hopes and fears, hopes and fears. Here we go. Hopes and fears. Hopes is to make, take the risk and go on a new journey, a new path together and stay on it. So, and that hopefully it's a good positive path. Just taking a risk, an emotional risk is what she's doing here. And sometimes she feels like she's on a cliff and she's about to fall off it. Uh, another thing, a disaster is looming. Uh, they tend to um, catastrophize things. Uh, their minds very much catastrophize. You're going to hurt me. So I'm going to fall off this cliff or, uh, you know, I don't have my heart open. One day I do, one day I don't, I might scorch you and take you down. It's very flippy flop, push and pull, push and pull relationship is what this energy is. It's very classic for borderline. Let's get to the final call, the final call, the final outcome here between Eve and Amber, <clears throat> Eve and Amber. We have here feeling very nostalgic here. So Six of Cups. Six of Cups is trying to find joy, um, passing on traditions. There, it's the childhood innocent card. So I think she might be working on her inner childhood wounds, trying to have some positive feelings about her childhood. Um, it's also returning to familiar places, kind of gives her that you know good feeling. Uh, in her mind at least and it's also generosity trying to connect the current to the past feeling happiness 
it's not a bad card. It's actually a very good card. It is harmony. So I would say the two of them are quite harmonious together. Uh, so it's, it's looking like it's quite positive. I think obviously they've had some fights because the pendulum said yes, and especially here when she feels like it's not working out and she feels ignored and she's not getting the help she wants uh, and she doesn't feel like things are going well and she doesn't, you know, she feels, you know, she, she wants to cut corners and she can't, she feels neglected. Feeling neglect is when she goes dark. If you're neglecting me, I go dark. And that's why it's a challenge with the karma. But overall, this is actually quite positive. Um, it's looking like it's a pretty good relationship for her. Uh, I'm surprised, but hey, good for her. Okay, seven of cups in reverse. So seven of cups in reverse is if they're actually not grounded in reality. So they sometimes do seek escaping it and they're sometimes unwilling to face reality. So they're kind of in a bit of a, a a, a fantasy, a fantasy land. The relationship is quite fanta fantastical, I would say. Uh, it's not super grounded in reality. Uh, they are very much in their head, imaginations, what's real, what's fake. Is this relationship real or is it fake? So I think she's not sure, is this true connection or not? Uh, that's that kind of paranoia, a little bit of psychosis, uh, you know, really caught up in your head, choices. It's just um, being excited and being afraid at the same time, wanting to make good choices, but you can do something very reckless with your choices. And so in here, she realizes she's not always grounded in reality and, and unwilling to face it. She likes to be in that fantasy land, the fantasy world, the shared fantasy. Uh, look at all the options we have. So that could be sort of like future faking, you know, future faking of what they could be doing with themselves and what they can do. So there is this sort of fantasy um, going on with them, which can become very reckless very easily. And with certainty, not uncertainty, certainty because the seven is in reverse. Um, you know, upright is uncertainty, not sure if it's going to be that way. Here, it's very certain that they have a tendency to get reckless with their fantasy. So they kind of go into this whole fantasy of choices, what we can do with our life. Oh, we can go here. Oh, we can go there. Oh, we can do this. Oh, you know, that's sort of future faking and being kind of reckless. And it's emotional. There's like an emotional divide between the solid grounding and then it, it gets broken up with emotion. So it's a lot of emotional thinking. And emotional thinking is not logical thinking. And that's the other thing with BPD, borderline, is they think with their, their heart and not their head. They're more emotional thinkers and they're not logical thinkers. They're very much caught up in their emotions. And emotions is their reality. They tend not to go to logic. They tend to always rely on emotions. So that's what I see for this. Yes, indeed. All right, you guys. I hope you enjoy this. Till next time, like and subscribe. Bye, you guys.